Hello and welcome to another Doctor's Assistant 1 video. Today I'm doing a uh, Nintendo Wii U, uh, <laughs> my Nintendo Wii U game collection uh, update video even. Um, it is the 5th, I want to say, of June, nope, July even. <laughs> um, 5th of July uh, 2020, which is kind of bonkers. Uh, but yeah, um, that I'm recording this video on. First game that I've got here is, um, ow, I've got something in my eye, which really is annoying. Um, first game I've got here is Bayonetta 2, which is the most recent game that I've picked up in my Wii U collection. As of this recording, I haven't played it at all, so I have literally nothing to say about this game. Um, other than it used to be exclusive for the longest time on Wii U, it's um, developed by Platinum but published, if I'm not mistaken, by Nintendo because it was basically the only way this game would ever actually get funded. So yeah, uh, so that's the thing. It was exclusive to the Wii U for the longest time, uh, but now it's on uh, Switch as well. Um, unfortunately, this isn't the super rare version of uh, Bayonetta 2 Wii U where it has uh, the uh, the first game as well. Uh, this is just the standard uh, copy of the second game where it's just the second game and that. Um, it's supposed to be really sort of epic big scale action uh, action adventure sort of very akin to uh, I get very um, Devil May Cry vibes from this game. Uh, it's a 16 rated game as well which is very rare for a Wii U game so yeah. Oh and I also got it for like a fiver as well. Uh, five pounds so it was uh, dirt cheap really, it was uh, next to note, so it just made sense to get it because um, I didn't know when else I'd see it out and about. Uh, Kirby and the Rainbow Paintbrush, it's the most recent game I've actually completed as of this recording. Uh, yeah, it's a really fun game. I mean, on the back it does say or have like you can turn into a rocket submarine or a tank. I'd probably say tank is probably the best ability. Uh, rocket and submarine were quite challenging to use if I'm being completely honest for me anyway uh, but I do really love how you use the stylus to guide Kirby and it feels very refreshing very innovative for the series and, and that I love the claymation style it very much feels like playing a uh, uh, Hardman uh, sort of Wallace and Gromit video game almost like literally the art style is very uh, claymation which I, I adore um, very unique art style in that sense, um, fun, colourful game, uh, really cool soundtrack and I'm about, I think I got about 78, 79% so just short of 80% on my first playthrough so which is pretty decent I think anyway so yeah. Uh, then we have next Pikmin 3 which is a Nintendo Selects game that I got off um, Amazon uh, and fortunately it's not in German because I don't speak German or all um, it's just that's where it came from which is kind of weird I know but yeah I was playing this up until I got the Kirby game uh, I haven't played it in a while which is kind of annoying because I feel like it's the type of game that's going to be very difficult to pick back up it's a real time strategy on a games console which sounds like a nightmare sounds like it wouldn't work but it's surprisingly for the most part intuitive and 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 that it's it's not it is intuitive it's just something that you have to keep playing through you can't it's not one of those games you can play for a week or two and then or or play for a couple of days drop it and then come back to it like three weeks later and just know how to play the game if that makes sense um it's one of those games where you need a lot of the time and energy in this game and that's about it really um the worlds and the characters designs of the pikmin there's loads of different new pikmin uh types in this game uh if i'm not mistaken uh i've only got the first the only other game i've got in the series is the first game on wii on nintendo wii i don't have the second one unfortunately i think that one's quite rare now f to get a physical copy of uh pikmin 2 on Wii, uh, but yeah, it uses utilizes the Wii U gamepad really well as uh, as well. It, like you know, you have your map down there and that, so the whole screen, uh, TV screen, is very much utilized um, effectively uh, doing combat and stuff. Which reminds me, I don't like the combat in Kirby. 
uh, in that game. Uh, but yeah, combat's fun and, and that. I'm not very good at the game, basically. <laughs> a lot of my Pikmin always end up dying, but it's a very cutesy, very uh, photorealistic world and garden-like environments with these like very surreal, cartoony sort of uh, little characters, which are really adorable, really. Um, Captain Toad Treasure Tracker, I think I got this from Amazon as well, which is, again, another Nintendo Selects game. What is very annoying is the fact that, for me, is that the plastic wrapper of sorts, or plastic sort of uh, wrapping around the game is very much creased in that, which is really weird because it's, uh, I bought it brand new, um, and that, and I think I paid, like, 20 quid for it, which isn't too bad, um, I know this game's on uh, Switch, uh, Captain Toad Treasure Tracker, but there's also a DLC as well, so I'd be paying 50 quid for the base game and then 20 quid for DLC, whereas this, as I say, was like 20 quid, so it made more sense to get this version, uh, to me anyway. It very much is like the game Fez, uh, the indie game Fez, but with a more likeable sort of protagonist, in my opinion, because it's a Nintendo character, it's very fun, it's... It's a very fun uh, action adventure platformer, which I have completed as well. Another Nintendo Selects game, uh, which I the uh, what I like about the Nintendo Selects game games is the the fact that they don't really do anything too different with the spine. Uh, all they affect with the spine is just having this little em emblem on there, which honestly I don't mind uh, because if you display your games like this on a shelf or like that like I do with like stacks um, that way stack them that way um, if you ha if you see them in shops then they'll obviously display them this way but um, most people in in their game rooms don't <laughs> display them like in a shop uh, retail store <coughs> And so there isn't that much difference on the spine, which is always great. Uh, on the cover, all the differences is just this red border with, like, gold, as well as this, Nintendo Selects. Um, I didn't buy this one. I bought... Uh, my mum got me at uh, Super Mario uh, 3D World quite some Christmases ago now. It's a really fun game. I have completed it. Um, and that, it's, it's really fun. I just don't like the fact that it's very, sort of... You have to have four players to get as much out of it as possible. I'm pretty sure there are some green moons, uh, not green moons, green stars and or stickers that you can only get if you have four players, which is very annoying. Um, and that, honestly, I don't want it to be ported over uh, to the Switch because it's one of the few games that I think should still just stay as a, as a for lack of a better term, hidden gem on the uh, Wii U, I think, anyway. One of the few third-party games I've got by Sega and or just third-party games on this console, which is Sonic and All Stars Racing Transformed. Uh, it's pretty fun. It's sort of above-average sort of game. It's nothing bad. It's it's pretty cool. Like you get you know your aerial sort of vehicles as well as like submarine water-based ones, and then land with just the cars. Um, it's pretty fun. It includes Wreck It Ralph as well, which is pretty neat. Um, it's just obviously not the best kart racer on the console, of course not. There is a different game that will take that spot. Um, next you have uh, Legend of Zelda, uh, the, the Wind Waker HD, so it's a HD version. It's also a Nintendo Selects uh, game, which is kind of weird because that one, this one seems to be the only one without that weird emblem thing on the spine, so that's weird. Um, but yeah, I haven't fully played this i've played all of maybe 10 20 minutes of it if that really or at most maybe 20 minutes um or half an hour if that really um i really do this year it looks like a summer game i really want to sort of this summer maybe summertime dedicate some time to sinking my teeth into this game it looks gorgeous absolutely stunning in hd um you know it's very much um it's hard to describe like claymation slash sort of this sort of really cool cell shaded um disney esque sort of um <clears throat> animation come to life really which is ironic because i do recall um uh back in the day back in like 2001 2 whenever this game originally released on gamecube there being a massive backlash about the art style 
which is weird because again it ages really well and it upscales to sort of HD console, I want to say 1080p um, console really well um, and that and uh, my, my only, my very limited understanding is that all of Hyrule is underwater hence the reason why there's so much water and you have to, to go in that talking boat and you know um, traverse the, the uh, dungeons that way and that and uh yeah, it's just, again, I think with the art style and the colourful nature of it, as well as all the ocean and the water and the, um, the sort of happy-go-lucky feel of it and, and that and the brightness of it, uh, in contrast to, say, Twilight Princess or Majora's Mask, I do think that this game is very much, a, as I just said earlier, a summer game, uh, and that's kind of why I want to play it then. Uh, next up, we have Pokémon Tournament. What a waste of money on my end. Uh, I spent, I think, 45 quid on this. Uh, played maybe an hour or two. I really do regret buying it. It's, um, yeah, it's basically Tekken, but with Pokemon, which sounds fun, but then you realise that it's not, at least for me anyway. Um, I mean, if you like the game, more power to you. Um, uh, next up we have Devil's Third. I fortunately didn't pay for this. Uh, I got it for a Christmas. It's the one of the few 18 rated games on the Wii U. Um, and that. It's not a good game. It is very weird, very strange from what I remember. It's just a game that I really wanted to get in my collection as it were. Just for the fact that I know that it's rare uh, to get hold of. Or at least I think it's rare. I could be wrong in saying that honestly. I think... It might be rarer over in the States and actually in U in the UK and Europe. Uh, Devil's Third is actually quite common. So actually I could be talking out my ass. <laughs> um, next up we have uh, Super Mario Maker. Really enjoyed it for what it was at the time. Really in did enjoy it. I think I got anywhere between 50 to 50 plus hours I want to say on this game definitely I am kind of I was kind of annoyed at the time that it never had a single player which is kind of ironic because the sequel does yeah I've not got around to completing the single player campaign of Super Mario Maker 2 yet this one just seemed like such an innovative brilliant use of the Wii U gamepad and an amazing idea from Nintendo but it's such a shame because it's like it came out on what ostensibly is one of their weakest, if not worst, games consoles um, to date, really, uh, excluding the Virtual Boy. Um, and yet it was like this billion dollar idea, an amazing idea that, like, you know, you wouldn't have expected them to have come up with. It utilises, as I said before, the Wii U gamepad really well, and I just feel like more people should have played this original game. And what's weird is, like, by the time the sequel came out, it just like died out like every, everyone who'd already really been hyped for that game had kind of already played it on Wii U and then all the people who probably never had played it either played it for a bit and then just got bored of it or just played it but just maybe didn't make as much of a song and dance about it online maybe I don't know it's it's weird it's like Mario Maker 2 came out sort of I want to say summertime uh, around summertime 2019 and yet it just sort of came and went. It was weird. Uh, Yoshi's Woolly World. I haven't completed this game. I do enjoy it. It's just that I think, honestly, the yarn aesthetic isn't... I think because Kirby's Epic Yarn was a yarn aesthetic, and then this, I think they both kind of burnt me out on that aesthetic. I personally prefer Yoshi's Crafted World as a Yoshi game. I honestly prefer both the art style as well as the gameplay. It's slightly more intuitive. There's there's some slight change in the mechanics of the, the, the game that make it even slightly easier. Crafted World, not this one, that I, I like about Crafted World. Um, as well as the fact that because it's on Switch, it's easier to have two players. It just looks nicer. I can have it portable. I can take it on the go. This one, it does still look gorgeous because it's in HD. And whereas, obviously, Kirby's Epic Yarn never was in HD because it was a Wii game. Um, I just, I don't know. I, 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 I do like the game. I'm not very far in it. I think I'm in maybe World Two, maybe World Three. Uh, so yeah, I've not, I've not completed it. Original Splatoon, what can I say other than that it's clearly one of my favourite games uh, on this console. 
I hate the fact that the cover is so grimy in that, honestly. Um, that's very upsetting to me. Um, but yeah, I mean, this is one of my favourite games of all time, really. Um, you know, I've spent 200 hours in this game. I never even got up to level cap, which is the weirdest thing. Uh, level cap, in the end, ended up being uh, level 50. I got very close, though. I got to, like, level 44, level 45... Um, and as I say, I've spent about 200 hours, I want to say I have 100%ed Splatoon, the original one on Wii U, I've got all the weapons, got all the secret scrolls, got, as I say, everything you could get other than the level cap really, um, and maybe the highest ranks on the ranked stuff, but obviously I can't really do much of that anymore because of the whole fact that the servers are down now, because everyone's playing two, so yeah, um, but yeah, a an amazing, amazing game that really... I want to say it took the world by storm, but again, I think if it had, if this had come out on like say the Wii, I think it would have maybe made way more of a splash. No pun intended, but uh, I think. But then I don't know if the inf in it, if the infrastructure and internet and or online was quite what it was on Wii compared to Wii U. So yeah, um, Mario Kart Eight, the original one, I've played about. 100 150 hours on this one i did buy the dlc uh and that because it just made sense because when i did buy it it got me the variant co colors of yoshi and uh shy guy which was a nice incentive and yeah it's it's a really fun really good game uh i spent a lot of time playing that against my brother uh not as much with the the deluxe one but porting this game was a no-brainer for nintendo because it's still selling like gangbusters it's definitely i think in the top three most sold games for the switch you know which just makes sense and i think the attachment rate for this version as well was something like i don't know like i want to say like definitely more than half maybe 80 90 percent of all wii u owners had Mario Kart 8, which doesn't surprise me because it's it's that good. Um, Super Smash Bros. for Wii U, it, it's a Smash Bros. game. It is what it is. It's a you know behemoth of a franchise and a mega crossover and a celebration of games and the games or ga the games industry uh, at large. Uh, obviously, it's quite outdated and not as big scale as obviously Ultimate, which is very much the biggest game they've ever done uh but it introduced some decent ideas i want to say if i'm not mistaken it added or uh, was the game with the sort of eight players could play the game and you could use your 3ds as a controller and there was the 3ds version which i did definitely play more of and to give you an idea of how unfortunately failing the wii u was at the time the 3ds game Although it was obviously the more gimped, watered-down version of this Smash Bros. game, did actually very much outsell this version. Uh, you know, by I don't know anywhere between like twenty to forty percent. You know, more sales, but which is kind of depressing. Um, Hyrule Warriors. Uh, it's a Dynasty Warriors game. It's Zelda. I'm not particularly fond of either. Why do I have this in my collection? Uh, because I asked for it for Christmas and my mum was nice enough to give me it, so that's cool. <laughs> um, what was I going to say? Uh, I do remember having a few fond moments and all memories uh, playing it with my brother, so it wasn't, you know, a complete, you know, bust of a of a, of a Christmas present, as it were. New Super Mario Bros. U, um, I, I really like this game. Another one that I didn't really see the point in them redoing on switch but again if it sells it sells uh there was a lot of people who didn't buy the wii u so not a lot of people actually played this one i have completed it from point a to point b i've not 100 percented it uh it's one of the few uh 2d uh platformers mario platformers that i have completed again i have a lot of fond memories playing this with my older brother because basically his weakness was my biggest strength and vice versa um, in so much as he'd be not particularly great at doing the more sort of nimble 
nuanced platforming, uh, whereas I feel like I had that down a bit more than he did. He'd always be like, speedrun, and then immediately die. Um, whereas I could be a bit more agile and a bit more nimble uh, in the main levels, and then the bosses, I'd always die and be terrible, and he'd be able to beat them very much you know, like, really easily, for whatever reason, so that was always awesome, I genuinely don't think if I just played this on my own that I'd be able to beat it completely on my own, so, again, say what you will about this game, but I have a lot of fun memories playing it, and therefore I do really enjoy it, uh, I do agree with the main criticisms, however, that it is quite, sort of, meh, and they've kind of push themselves into a corner with the whole Mario Maker thing now and artistically this game series has very much stagnated and hit this sort of uh, place where yeah it's it's not as uh, varied or, or, or stylistic as some of the other 2D platformers that Nintendo offer um, the most uh, varied and or visually striking level and or stage slash part of New Super Mario Bros. Uh, you from what memory is the Vincent Van Gogh esque paintings and our backgrounds of some of the swamp levels or poison swamp levels? Uh, Lego City Undercover, a really fantastic game. Uh, it's basically um, it's basically a GTA meets a Lego game. It's really fun. It's um, I think I even bought like a deluxe version uh, which came with uh, the main guy, I can't remember his name off the top of my head, um, the main cop dude as a Lego minifigure, I was that hyped for this game. It really utilises the Wii U gamepad a lot with a lot of unique features, um, not just using the map on the, on the second screen or just using the second screen as an inventory. I mean it does those things but it does some other things that are quite outside the box and I commend it for that and I honestly I know that it's I'm pretty sure it's on uh, PS4 and Xbox One now but seriously if for whatever reason you see a Wii U pretty cheap and ha and buy one or you have a Wii U and you don't have this game for whatever reason I genuinely think you should pick this one up it's um, again a, a really great game that I kinda am sad about the fact that it became multi-plat um part of me is happy about that because it means more people get to experience it but then this this version the effort that they went to to make this version more unique gets very much overlooked because there are more uh common and better maybe versions ones that probably run better because a lot of times are atrocious in this game that's my major only criticism and i think i've spent about 60 hours in this game uh i've completed the game i've got about 50 or 60 percent in the game so i would love to one day say i've 100 percented it but yeah uh nintendo land very fun sort of tech demo for what the wii u was capable of back in the day and um, very fun party game honestly i kind of prefer it than wii sports myself i don't know about wii sports resort because i never really sunk a lot of time into that one or sunk my teeth into that one a lot and um, myself personally i don't actually own it of this recording unfortunately that game but Either way, Nintendo Land very much utilises a lot of different stuff about the Wii U gamepad as well as Wii remotes and stuff and it's just fun. It's, yeah, it's the only way I can describe it is really fun. It's, it's more of a tech demo game for gamers as opposed to casual gamers, which, let's be honest, that was more Wii Sports territory and I think that's why it fits better for this console maybe because I don't know if they were trying to go more with gamers or get more gamers uh, back after the Wii U, uh, even though those people will have very much uh, left the Wii, I think. Um, but yeah. Uh, last but not least, uh, we have Zombie U, uh, which again is the second and only 18 uh, rated game I have on the, the console. It's a th another, oddly enough, third party game uh, by Ubisoft, one of the few. Third party games uh, that I have in my collection for Wii U games as well as a Ubisoft game. And uh, yeah, I got it with the console because I got way back when the Zombie U uh, Deluxe Edition of the Wii U, which came with the black Wii U with 32 gig, um, uh, 32 gig console as well as a copy of this game, which at the time this game on its own was like 50 quid, as well as like a Pro Controller, which could retail anywhere between 50 to like 
nearly a hundred quid, a hundred pounds, like sixty to like no fifty to like eighty quid, maybe you know. Um, so you were looking at a lot of money if you got like say the the eight gig Wii U, which was the white one. I don't know why anyone would get that one, but say you got that, then you wanted Zombie U, that would be fifty quid, and then you wanted a Pro Controller, that would be as I say another like 50 or 80 quid so it just made more sense to get the uh, Wii U, the black deluxe Wii U that was at the time I think 250 I think the Switch is yeah like 30 quid more than what I paid for the Wii U well I say I paid for I I saved up about enough to pay for half of it and then my nan bought well paid for the other half uh, back in the day and uh, yeah kind of mad i do like zombie u I, I remember playing a lot of the multiplayer local multiplayer with a lot of people um and that because it's, it's really fun multiplayer i've never completed the campaign which is a shame because from what i understand the very few people i do know online who have played the game say that it's a very fun uh sort of game uh i do like the mechanic and all idea that there's like permadeath i think it is uh where when you get killed by a zombie, your character does actually die. You respawn as a different human. And then you can see your previous self out in the wild as a zombie. And then if you bash them in with a cricket bat, uh, you can then scavenge what items you did have uh, before you died uh, that time around, if that kind of makes sense. Which is such a, a unique, interesting gameplay mechanic that I'm surprised isn't used in a lot more sort of um, uh, action-adventure horror games, you know. Uh, like Resident Evil, for example. But yeah, uh, that's my Nintendo Wii U game collection as of uh, January the 5th, uh, uh, 2020. Uh, so yeah, uh, thanks for watching. Comment, rate, and subscribe.